Hi everyone, thanks for joining me again. I managed to coax Sammy up on the couch for a little visit, so we'll see how long he sticks around. My name is Laura, and this is my YouTube channel called I Heart Knitting. Uh, you can find me on the internet as I Heart You, and that is spelled E-W-E, and that is my Instagram handle, that is the name of my Etsy shop, and you can find me on Ravelry as I Heart You Knits. So I haven't posted or uploaded anything in about three weeks. I thought I was going to be back a little sooner than that. The last episode was my Halloween episode. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Things just kind of happened. And so here we are. It's like almost three weeks later. But uh, I'm back and I've got some things to show you. I've got some um, new projects and one thing I've finished up and... Anyways, it's going to be great. <laughs> so thanks for coming by. If this is your first time, uh, welcome. If you're a returning viewer, thank you so much for coming back. And uh, yeah, I'll just get right into it. I have a finished object here, which is my socks on circular needles. So I did these on nine inch circulars. I started these in January. <laughs> So there was a bit of an experiment there. It was my first time um, working with 9-inch circular needles. I have Chowgu 2.25mm uh, 9-inch circs. And yeah, I finally finished them. They took a while. I would say it took me at least to like half of the first sock to get used to working with the 9-inch circulars. And then after that, the motion got easier. Like it's, it almost feels a little restricting at first. Um, if you're used to using double points or magic loop like I am. Um, but yeah, your, you know, your hands find the rhythm eventually and it does go fast um, <laughs> when you actually work on your project. <laughs> so when I actually sat down and knit on these, um, you know, that motion of kind of going around and around and around worked really well. Um, you know, nope, oh, there he goes. Bye, Sammy. Uh, anyways, the motion worked really well for actually kind of getting some progress made because, you know, you're not stopping and rearranging your needles in between. So yeah, I don't have any new needle or new socks on my 9 inch circs yet, but I do plan on continuing to use them. Probably not exclusively, but, um, you know, it'd be great for, as my friend pointed out, it'd be great for theater knitting or somewhere where you can't really look, where you can just kind of go around and around um, without having to worry about rearranging your needles and that sort of thing. So yeah, this is a sparkle base. Um, these socks are dyed by Lara of the Fawn and the Fox. She's not currently dyeing. This is her Cabin in the Woods colorway on her Magpie base. Um, I'm sure it's still out there in the world. If you were desperate, you could check out Ravelry D stashes or something like that. Um, but yeah, just my simple vanilla sock recipe, fish lips, kiss heel. Uh, yeah, you've seen those a lot. So um, I'm glad to have them finished and have a finished pair of socks off the needles for my box of socks. Uh, and then the second thing that I've been doing a lot of work on is another new sock project. Um, so these are tweed socks that, as you can see, I've done a lot of work on and um, I'm really, really excited about them. I have a pair of tweed socks um, out of this um, gray tweed that I've had in my sock box, like, you know, my, my sock drawer for years. Like, I can't think of how long it's been. They probably are like six or seven years old at this point and they're starting to wear through on the bottom I know I could darn them but when my socks wear out they wear out like the whole foot almost goes at once and honestly after seven years or so I think they've you know they've done a good job <laughs> and you know it's okay to let them go to sock heaven um, this is kind of an aside, but I actually keep all my yarn scraps and really small fabric scraps and everything. And I have a plan to use them as like stuffing. Um, I have a project in mind, um, a sewing project, which um, I keep all that stuff. So it's not like they're getting thrown away. They'll just get repurposed into something else. So anyways, I wanted to recreate those uh, original socks. And what I did with those ones was I started a toe up sock 
and then I just kept going until I ran out of yarn. So they were pretty tall. They went up about, I don't know, maybe two thirds of the way up my calf. So I wanted to recreate those. So I cast this on. Um, so what I do is I do Judy's Magic Cast On. I just started with eight stitches and then I basically just reversed the, like rather than doing the decreases that I normally do for the toe on a top down sock, I just reversed it and did those as increases. So, you know, I increased every round for, um, I think it's nine rounds that I do and then every other round for five rounds. Um, until I got to my 64 stitches. And so I'm using Knit Pick Stroll, Stroll Tweed Sock Yarn and 2.25 millimeter Chiaogu needles for Magic Loop. And so I just did the gray, um, that's the, um, it's called Down Heather, I think in the Stroll Tweed. And then this kind of tealy color is North Sea Heather. And so I just knit a regular foot and then I did my fish lips kiss heel. The fish lips kiss heel is great because it works for top down or toe up socks, which I think is really cool. And then what I've done on the back of my leg here is after 25 rounds of just straight knitting, I started increasing. Um, so I kind of found the middle point of the back of my leg. And then what I'm doing is I'm increasing two stitches uh, every 10 rounds. And I think I'm going to keep going until, until I probably have about 80 stitches and then I'm going to do um, a couple more rounds of stocking it and then I'll start doing my ribbing. So yeah, I'm just basically copying, um, I should have brought them in, my other tweed socks that um, I've had for quite a while just to replace them because I like these ones, they kind of peek out, like this height will peek out of the top of my rubber boots a little bit, which I kind of like. So um yeah, I originally, the first gray tweed ones that I did, you can watch the um, my box of socks video if you're interested in seeing those ones actually. So when I originally did those, I followed a recipe from Pearl Soho. So the pattern for the little cable knee highs from Pearl Soho, that's a free pattern. Um, and that one is actually cool because it has a turned heel and gusset. Oh, sorry. He's barking. Uh, it has a turned heel and gusset. <laughs> one sec. Okay. <laughs> Sammy just started howling because an emergency vehicle went by. It's, it's a wonderful, um, coon hound. <laughs> trait that they like to howl along with the sirens so he's probably just trying to say hi to John my husband as he goes by my husband is a firefighter on the island here so um, I think that's where it kind of started he just wanted to say hello to John as he went by um, so what was I saying okay so I was talking about the Pearl Soho little cable knee-high pattern and how it has for it has a instructions how am I trying to say this it has instructions for a turned heel and gusset flap for a toe up sock which is really really cool and I didn't choose to do it this time I chose to do the fish lips kiss heel because I was doing um I wanted to do a little contrast color for the heel and toe but it's very cool and um I would you know recommend that you check it out if you're curious about it um, because if you're like me, your go-to is probably top down. Um, I asked on Instagram, I did a poll actually and asked people and I would say about maybe 20 to 30% do uh, toe up socks and then the rest of them, the majority do top down. But if you want to try something different and just play around with something new, um, check out that pattern from Pearl Soho, the little cable knee highs. Um, it is really fun to see how a turn heel and gusset can be engineered from a toe up sock. Um, if you can picture that everything's kind of backwards and, um, the way that you make it all come together is really cool in my opinion. So you can check that out. But for this, I just did the fish lips kiss heel, which is a $1 pattern on Ravelry. I would also really recommend checking that one out. 
um, because it is full of instructions on how to size your socks properly. It shows you how to like trace out your own um, foot, like like a little, you do like a cardboard trace out of your foot and then it, the pattern shows you where to mark it. And so um, you can actually put that little cardboard template, like slip it on your sock and then see where you're at in your toe up sock and uh, figure out how to do your heel turn that way. So anyways, it's really fun if you're curious about that. Um, Fish Lips Kiss Heel is a great heel as well, it, even if you're just going to use it for you know, your regular top down socks. So yeah, I'm um, really enjoying these. There's something about having something to do every 10 rounds that makes it more interesting than just doing the straight knitting around and around. And I'm hoping to have those finished fairly soon. That's not something I want to sit on the needles for too long because I want them finished and wearable. I'm really loving that color of Stroll Tweed. Um, and I don't know. I've been really into tweed socks lately. I made those mustardy yellow ones a while ago too and that I really love. Um, I'll have a link below to Knit Picks if you want to shop Knit Picks. Um, I have an affiliate link for them. I'm not sponsored by them, but I do have an affiliate link set up with them um, if you want to click on that down below um, and check out some of their yarns. And then the second thing I've done here is um, I started a pair of self-striping socks with this really fun yarn. It is the Peppermint Mocha Colorway um, by Freckled Whimsy. Freckled Whimsy does really cool self-striping yarns. This is one of their kind of holiday colorways. So it has three tones of brown and then like a speckled portion and some minty green and pink and red. Um, but as you'll see, these are not socks. <laughs> um, if you follow me on Instagram, I posted the other night in my stories about this. I had started these socks. I had knit um, pretty much down a long leg already. And I just realized that I didn't, I, I just wasn't into them for some reason. It's really weird. I just kept on looking at them and I was just like, no, something's not right. And I was like, I think they need to be mittens. <laughs> so I ripped them out and I started over and I just before we finished record or before I started recording here, um, just finished these this morning. They took like a couple days, really satisfying little mitten project. And somehow I'm just like, yes, this is what they should have been all along. <laughs> so who knows where that came from in my brain, but I'm really happy that I switched these around because now I have these super cute festive mittens to wear. Um, so yeah, this is fingering weight self-striping yarn and the pattern I decided to use is a free pattern. It's Tin Can Knits, The World's Simplest Mittens. And I had heard um, the ladies from the Little Red Mitten podcast talking about this pattern. I know a lot of other people, like it comes up a lot, a lot of other people use the World's Simplest Mitten pattern as well. And yeah, it's a free pattern. It's by Tin Can Knits. If you know Tin Can Knits, um, their patterns always have a huge size range, which is great. Um, this one is also really cool because it is, they have not only multiple sizes, they have toddler, child, and then adult, small, medium, and large, but they also have this written out for any weight of yarn. So fingering, DK, worsted, and bulky. So it's really cool the way they've done this pattern. Um, a lot of the instructions are kind of the same from, you know, whether you're using fingering weight or bulky for lengths and things like that. And then they just have different instructions for how to do your gusset on your, um, like how to do your thumb gusset and you know how many stitches on your needles and that sort of thing they just change that depending on which size you of yarn you're using so I thought that was super fun um the fingering weight size calls for two millimeter needles for the uh, ribbing and 2.75 millimeter needles for the rest of the mitten and I actually decided to do 2.25 millimeter needles because I was worried that these were going to be a little tight and it's funny because they 
they are quite fitted. I was worried that they were going to be small. I have small hands to start with, but I was like, no, these are looking really, really small. Um, but what this pattern does is it seems to work in like extra length. Like I thought they were going to be too long and skinny for me, but I think that's actually on purpose where when you put these on, um, so when you're, when you stretch out your knitting, you lose a bit of the length. So I think that extra length was worked in there so that your mitten um, fits well and has room to stretch. So if it hadn't had that extra length worked in, then it would have stretched too far this way and become too short. Like, I don't know if you've ever done that. I sure have, where I've knit a sweater that the gauge is just probably a little bit smaller than it should be. It's just a little bit tighter around. And then what happens is as the fabric stretches out, you know, to make room <laughs> across, you lose a little bit of length. So um, anyways, really smart. I should have trusted the Tin Can Knits ladies that they knew what they were doing. They're very intelligent and <laughs> the mittens fit great. They are like a little bit snug, but you kind of, I don't know, I kind of like things to be a little snug at first. And I managed to get the colors pretty much matched, except, um, you know, I must have just used a little bit of extra red on this one because I don't have the little red bit on the thumb, which I'm a little sad about, but I wasn't willing to like pull out all this, um, you know, all this extra yarn just to get a little bit of red there. So yeah, World's Simplest Mittens. I knit the adult small, which I think is like a seven inch hand circumference. They are not very thick, but they're nice and cozy. And I really, really like them. They're super cute. And I only used about maybe 30 grams of yarn to make these. So I might make another pair. I was thinking about trying to crank out one or two knit things for, um, my nieces and my nephew before I send off their Christmas box but I want to get that sent off in like the next week so I'm not sure if that's gonna happen yet but yeah I still have lots of yarn left I used um, almost exactly two repeats for every um, mitten so four repeats total uh, in the 30 grams and yeah the only thing I don't love is the way they do the decreases on the top it makes kind of a little pointy top um, but I can live with that. So yeah, um, check out this pattern if you're looking for a free quick mitten pattern. Uh, Tin Can Knits also has tons of tutorials to go along with their patterns and a lot of support if you are a new knitter and they are, um, well, they're Canadian and Scottish, I think. Um, the other thing I worked on is my pink velvet sweater. Um, I have finished the yoke for that and I just put it down for a little bit before knitting through and I'll be splitting for the sleeves soon. Um, so I'm loving this. I just love the way this turned out. I'm using Euphoria Knits fingering weight and then also their mohair held double for the color work. Can see it has a really beautiful halo. Um, I won't talk about this too much because I've talked about it a lot on the last couple episodes, but I'm super happy with it. I went up one needle size um, and then did the third size, which is um, normally what I would do for an Andrea Mowry pattern. So the pink velvet sweater by Andrea Mowry. Love this. And I'll be very happy when this is kind of, I've got a bit more progress made on it, but I just had to kind of put it aside a little bit and take a break from that. So I worked on the socks and the mittens a lot this week. And then I also wanted to show you and give you a quick update on my stone crop sweater because it is going really well, um, but slowly. So this is the stone crop sweater. This is a sweater pattern also by Andrea Mowry. Um, it's a little scrunched up on me, me, my needles right now because I have um, all the stitches on here and I'm sized up on this one. I did the fourth size rather than the third and I also sized up in needles um, But I'm really happy with it. I decided to omit the bobbles There's supposed to be a bobble in between each one of these kind of little cable sections But I just omitted that because I don't love doing bobbles I knew it would really take a lot of time to do those bobble rows and I don't really need the extra volume of the bobbles going around anyways, so um, 
I've been picking this up and then doing, I've been trying to do like, even if I do like six rounds in an evening or something when we're watching TV, I did that pretty solid for a week or two there and I got a lot done and then I kind of stopped again. <laughs> so <laughs> got to pick this back up. Um, I'm using uh, Flock Fiber Take a Hike Sock. Um, the tealy color is Wavelength, and then the pink color is called, or the corally color is called Peach Pit. And uh, it's kind of fun because it there's a lot of kind of variation in the individual colors, like they're almost tonal. Um, so it's almost playing down the color work a little bit, but I don't mind that at all. And I'm glad I sized up. I might need to order another ball of the wavelength. And hopefully you won't see, you know, because it's not going to be the same dye lot. I bought this yarn in like, you know, early 2020. Um, but I only have three balls and I've already gone through most of one. So I think I'm probably going to need a fourth to finish it. Um, and I'm just hoping that... I'm hoping that I can kind of disguise any color changes that happen in between, you know, the original yarn and the extra ball that I have to get. Um, but what I'll probably do is just kind of alternate them for a few rounds and kind of fade it in if I can, just to kind of draw attention away from any changes that there might be. Um, so yeah, I'll make that decision. Probably once I'm done the body, I'll decide whether I'm going to need the extra yarn because I did decide to go up a size on this because I want it to be a little bit more oversized than the pattern is a little bit fitted. So yeah, these are in my, um, both of these are Riv Creative bags. Um, I feel bad because I'm always showing you things. It seems that, you know, like Riv Creative isn't making bags right now. <laughs> so um, what happened is I bought a lot of yarn and a lot of kind of knitting stuff a couple years back and then I decided I just needed a break from buying that much <laughs> uh, especially running my own business now and um, you know working with a little less income sometimes I just decided to take a break and enjoy what I have so I'm sorry that I don't often have new yarn coming in to show you and things like that but I'm just trying to go through what I already own uh, before investing in new stuff. So anyways, I really love those bags. Though. <laughs> They're really nice. <laughs> um, and then the last thing I finished that I wanted to show you is I did a little festive cross stitch. Um, so this is by the Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery. Um, I can't remember the name right now, but you can browse on the Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery's website. You can browse by... Um, theme so like you know spring autumn winter christmas that sort of thing so you can find it on there and it's got this little reindeer which my husband and i both think is like kind of like a reindeer chipmunk like hybrid <laughs> and um yeah little candy canes and some holly and then just these little um um christmas lights all around so i changed a couple of the colors uh the lights were supposed to be in like red and green um, maybe two colors of green and one color of red. Um, no, two colors of green and two colors of red, I guess, because I've got the red and the pink and the two blues here. <laughs> anyway, so I switched those out because I wanted to bring in some more of the colors. I have a lot of like that kind of vintage Christmas colors um, with the mints and the pinks and the reds and the greens. So I wanted to kind of bring that in and. Um, I also switched out um, some of the white, like the candy cane was supposed to be in white, but since I had this um, eight o'clock, I don't know if you can see here, but it has gold sparkle woven through it. So I had this white eight o'clock already with gold sparkle on it, and I wanted to use that, so I just switched out some of the white details for gray, um, like this was supposed to be white as well, and then just kept the white in for the highlights. Um, you know, on the lights and in the reindeer's eyes. And I think I chose a darker brown for, um, for the antlers as well, because the antlers were kind of light brown and I thought that they should be darker. So yeah, I do this. I, I, I don't mind switching out colors for cross stitch. You know, I know, um, there's always like specific colors called for 
but I usually just go through my floss stash that I have and try and work with what I have and you know if I don't think something is quite right I'll change it up and um, yeah just make it a little bit more my own so I love this little cross stitch it is on the bigger um, Ada I think it's 11 count so I use three strands of floss and I'm just waiting on a embroidery hoop to frame this I thought I had the right size but I don't um, so I ordered one um, and it should be here in another week or two so uh, I can finish this because I'm just starting to decorate for the holidays and uh, this will look really cute somewhere out you know maybe in our living room or kitchen somewhere and uh, I ordered a few other hoops as well at the same time I ordered um, a little batch of like three inch small ones and I bought a um, I bought a pattern that's supposed to be like a sampler, like an advent sampler with 24 little details. Um, but what I thought is I would use um, use the images I liked and just make some Christmas ornaments with those little three inch hoops. So I'm looking forward to that. Uh, I haven't started that yet, but I think that'll be a fun little bit of like mini projects um, for, you know, around through December. So yeah, that's pretty much all I've been working on. I have some bags to show you that went in the shop yesterday. Um, so I'll just grab those over here. I did do, so I did do my Christmas bag update that went in um, early November, first week of November. And there are just a few bags left. Um, so if you do want any like holiday theme or Christmas theme bags, there are a couple left. Um, yeah, you can have a look. I was going to show you those, but I showed you them last time, so there's no point in going through those again. Um, check out the shop if you want to see them, if you missed last week's episode, or you can pop back to last week's episode to see them all. Um, but this week I decided to do all Tula Pink fabrics. Uh, Tula Pink, if you don't know, is a, in my opinion, fantastic fabric designer. Uh, she's one of the reasons I kind of fell in love with quilting to start with. Um, her fabrics are really fun. She's known for really bright and bold and detailed uh, fabrics. And she also does a lot of like animal designs and um, just really fun colors as well. So I have a decent stash of kind of older tulip pink fabrics. You know, fabric designers put out a collection and then it's kind of gone. Um, so I have a stash of kind of some of her older fabrics. So I decided to pull those out and play with them. It's been a while since I did a Tula update and I know a lot of you out there love Tula Pink as much as I do. So I did quite a few bags and yeah, they're all by the same designer. So I got, this is in um, the sock size, my rectangular sock size. This is like a wave pattern. And if you can see there, there's actually writing on some of the waves and a little sailboat there. And it says, a smooth sea never made a skilled sailor. Um, so I love this design. I have it in this color with a really bright kind of aqua lining. And then I also have the same size in the darker colorway with the navy-ish darker blue and the aqua. And that has that dark lining. I have several of these raccoons. Uh, in a couple different colorways. So this one is kind of like a limey green with teal and a little bit of orange. And then that has a metallic gold and teal lining. I love this design. This is one of my favorites. These bright, I call them neon snails. And this also has the teal and metallic on the side here and a bright coral lining. This is another raccoon with a bit of a linen base. This is in pink and teal. And then also with a knit fabric design on the inside. So not knit fabric, but um, balls of yarn and needles. And then this is another raccoon colorway um, with like a brighter aqua and a pink. I have a bag really similar to this. So if you want to twin with me, um, we can we can twin with our <laughs> bags <laughs> and then the inside is this metallic or geometric pink here 
Um, in the medium drawstring, I have the snails in this really bright purple and blue with a bright blue lining. I have, this is like, I call it rainbow zebras. So if you see on this side, there are some purples and blues and greens. And then on this side, there are some pinks and reds and oranges. And then that has a really fun rainbow print on the inside. That's also tulip pink fabric. Uh, this is kind of a cool one where it's like it's like a sketches on graph paper. So these are some sketches of Tula's original designs that she had made into a fabric. You can see the zebras there. And I think it's really cool. Um, I think it's a neat concept. It almost looks like artist sketches. And so I've got that one and that just has a nice gray. And then I have the um, bright pink raccoons in the medium drawstring as well. And that has a matching teal lining. And then for large um, zippers, so these are large, they probably fit, I would say three to four skeins. And they have a zipper and a little uh, slip pocket on the inside. I have that wave design again. These have a handle too. This is a great size. This is one that I kind of forget to make, but I need to start making these again more often because they are a great size. They're about 14 inches wide. And then um, I think they're about 12 inches tall um, after the bottoms are boxed. This one's like a bird of paradise in really bright coral and teals. There's some pink and purple. And I just have like a pink and a teal coordinating inside on that one. The neon snails again. I think this is my favorite out of the bunch um, with that really fun rainbow fabric lining and then a polka dot pocket here. Yeah, I really like this one with the lemon yellow on the bottom. And then for um, the finch bucket size, like the extra large size, these are about 18 inches wide by about 12 inches tall. They have a really deep base on them and three slip pockets. It's not the easiest to see here, but there's one here, one here, and one on the other side. And so this is in the um, sketching fabric again. And then I have the rainbow zebras really like this one. Uh, it's much easier to see the pocket when it's a contrast fabric here. So it's like a rainbowy kind of fabric on the inside and that um, kind of light orange color. And then I also really like this one. Um, this one's like these neon jellyfish. That orange is really as bright as it's showing here. And um, like a black base on that one. And then this kind of like nautical print fabric on the inside that changes from light aqua down to, you can see on the base there, it goes down into the darker colors. So that is from the same collection. So the um, colors in here match the colors on the outside of the bag perfectly. So yeah, have a look at those. Uh, they just went into the shop um, on Friday, yesterday. So um, have a peek if you're interested in those. I might do one more update before the end of the year. Um, but I might not. <laughs> I'm just going to see how motivated I am in the next few weeks. And the shop is really full right now. I have quite a few things in there. So I'll just, uh, we'll just see how it goes. Um, but yeah, I think that's pretty much all I wanted to show you today. Um, yeah, I feel a little scattered. Hopefully, I'm sure it came across, but hopefully you can still follow me here. It's amazing how taking a couple weeks off uh, makes me feel like I'm out of practice. And um, oh, the last thing I wanted to say quickly is I know um, that a lot of you may be curious. I am in British Columbia, Canada, and you may have seen on the news about the catastrophic flooding that we experienced. Um, but I wanted just to let you know that everything is okay in our little corner of the world. The island didn't get hit very hard. Some of the roads flooded on uh, last Monday. Um, but just a few inches and there was no major damage, no washouts or anything. So we're very, very lucky. Um, you know, we have a full tank of gas and we have lots of food in the house and stuff like that. So we're feeling pretty grateful about that. Um, 
but yeah, it is really scary. My husband and I were actually up on Vancouver Island over the weekend last weekend. We were up in Qualicum Beach, which is about halfway up the east side of Vancouver Island. And we drove home on Sunday and it was really rainy on Sunday. Um, the roads weren't great, but they hadn't flooded or anything yet. Um, but we were going over the bridges and looking at all the rivers and they were so swollen. Um, and we're really happy that we made it back on Sunday because the next day, um, the Malahat, which is the main highway that connects the south end of Vancouver Island to the north, um, it got completely washed out and it was shut down and there were delays all week. It's still not back to normal. So, um, yeah, everything is fine. I'm feeling very grateful. <laughs> and as far as shipping and everything, all my orders go to, um, the lower mainland to like Vancouver and then they go out by plane. So I don't foresee any issues with shipping on our end unless, um, you are in an area that's been affected yourself. And if you are, um, you know, my heart goes out to you seeing all these videos and photos of the damage done in the interior. It's really scary. And, um, yeah, hopefully they can get things back to as normal as they can for you all soon. But yeah, I, other than that, I just wanted to touch base on that. Um, and, um, I think that's it for me. So yeah, I'll probably be back sooner rather than later. Uh, so I feel like I'm more in practice <laughs> and, uh, yeah, thanks so much for watching and we'll talk to you again soon.